frames of your book, how would you address them? I didn't believe me either. You did it? <clears throat> when I first started to study this information, my goal was to figure out how it didn't work. Okay. And in trying to figure out how it didn't work, I found hundreds and thousands of ways that it did work. Hmm. So my invitation to anybody that reads the book is to put it into action. Use it in your own life. Prove me wrong. Be my guest. And, I, and if you do that, you'll find for yourself that the, the proof is always in the book. The proof is... I, I know so many people that read a book and they either say, oh, that's just a bunch of hogwash or that won't work for me and they never really try it. My attitude is try it. See where it doesn't work. See where it does work. So you're saying it can basically work for anybody in any situation? Absolutely. I, 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 there's, a, there's one, uh, the final chapter of the book has to do with our subject of reality, our thoughts, and how our thoughts control our reality, control our experience. I once worked with a man whose daughter had committed suicide. Okay. And it was absolutely overpowering for him. He felt a lot of guilt. And he didn't ever realize that he could control those thoughts. And when I, when I say control those thoughts, what he did was he would take the image and he would push it away from him till it became a dot on the horizon. And every time the thought would come up, he'd push it away from him until it became a dot on the horizon. Well, if you're looking at a dot on the horizon, that's not very impactful. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking at a big, bright, colorful image of some horrible consequence, that's called worry, that's called guilt, that's called shame, that's called beating yourself up. People don't realize that they can move their pictures, that they can turn the sound down, that they can replace them with more positive thoughts. So I teach people how to do that. Okay, positive imagery. It's more than positive imagery. Positive imagery is when I visualize a positive end result. What I'm talking about is what happens when you see a big, bright, beautiful image of the worst possible thing that can happen. Okay like in America today. I'm going to lose my job. My kids are going to go on drugs. My wife is going to leave me. My boss is going to fire me. And we look at those pictures and we get all stressed out. Why? Make the picture go away. I teach people how to make the pictures go away. And it really works. Yeah. So it's called thought zapping. Thought zapping. Uh -huh. That's a clever way to put it. <laughs> and this is your first book, correct? It is my first book. It is my first book. And I'm, I'm currently working on a novel, but this, this was the first book that I wrote. And what is your next book about? My next book is about a, a trip that I took to Hawaii. Uh, it's about spiritual awakening and transformation. I went and lived with a Hawaiian kahuna in the rainforest of Kauai for wow. a week. And it's a recounting of the adventures that we had and the places that we went. That sounds great. Well, John, thank you for joining us today. It's been my pleasure. It was great talking to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. We're sponsored by Starving Writers Books. Get a great book at a great price at starvingwritersbooks.com. And we're here today at the Billiard Den in Richardson, Texas, where you can find us at sneakypeat.net. Good. That's it.